In the following interview, we will discuss art from the Forbidden City exhibit at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts in Richmond, Virginia. This special exhibit includes nearly 200 works of art that have been sent to the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts from the Palace Museum in Beijing, China. The Forbidden City, which became the Palace Museum in 1924, encompasses 180 acres and more than 1,000 structures and 1.8 million works of art. We will be seeing a number of slides from this exhibit in the upcoming interview, but viewers should know that the art is much larger than it appears on the screen. The actual scrolls are six feet and larger. The exhibition offers a unique journey into this astonishing museum, providing visitors a sense of its amazing architectural scale and the opportunity to examine some of its treasures. It's the first showing of this art in the United States. Welcome to the Bookman's Corner. I'm Lois Lindstrom. As reported in Virginia Living Magazine, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts in Richmond, Virginia, throws open the gates of the once impenetrable world of the Ming and the Xin dynasties, which ruled China from inside the imposed walls compound of the Forbidden City from 1420 to 1911. VMFA is the first art museum in the United States to establish an extensive collaborative project with the largest museum in the world, the Palace Museum in Beijing. We are very pleased to welcome guest author Li Jian, the curator and author of the book which accompanies this historic exhibit, Forbidden City, Imperial Treasures from the Palace Museum, Beijing. Very nice to have you here, Li. And we, we're so happy that you're going to be here to discuss the impressive art and artifacts from this exhibit, which opened on October 18, 2014, and will close on January 11, 2015. In total, the Forbidden City exhibit features 200 items carefully curated from the Palace Museum's collection of 1.8 million artifacts. Our guest author, Li Jian, who is the Rhodes and Leona B. Carpenter Curator of East Asian Art at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, will be giving commentary on the slides we will be showing from this historic exhibit. I want to ask Lee how she and others secured this exhibit for VMFA. First of all, we per prepared a checklist. And then the checklist contains about uh, more than 200 artworks. Mm -hmm. Then I provided this list uh, to the Palace Museum. They reviewed it. and. Uh, they basically approved about 90% of the objects on the checklist. Now, had this, had these objects been shown in museums in Europe or other? Some of them have yeah. been outside, mm -hmm. uh, uh, displayed in other museums, but many of them, uh, this will be the first time come to the United States, that including many major monumental paintings. I see, I see. So well, well, how long did the process take to get all, to collect all this art and to get it approved? Um, the final checklist, it took about uh, two years to, uh, to prove the check, uh, checklist. Mm -hmm. and, and so how is your book organized? Uh, the book is organized, uh, the main body for the book contains uh, four essays and 134 entries. Okay, 134 slides and pictures right then, right? I right. Mean, um, each uh, object featured in the exhibition uh, are really show on the, this catalog. Okay. Uh, did you have work with other artists uh, or, or collaborators in, in writing this book? Um, I invited uh, three uh, co-authors uh, to work with me on this uh, catalog, uh, including He Li, uh, the associate curator of uh, Chinese art at the Asian Art Museum of uh, San Francisco, mm -hmm. and He Mei Song, Chinese curator, curator of Chinese art at the Cincinnati Art Museum. Also, we, uh, we uh, invited uh, Ma Shengnan, research associate from Palace Museum. Okay. Now, I'm curious about your background. You were born in Beijing, but then you studied in the United States, right? You Correct. Studied, and you studied art in, where, where, where did you study? Yeah, I studied at the University of Minnesota. Okay. And then I graduated from there, and then I worked with three 
art museums uh, since then. Can you briefly describe the, the religious works that are here in this collection? Um, I included uh, 30 objects uh, reflect uh, the religious uh, uh, works uh, uh, from the Palace Museum. And uh, they are including uh, paintings, tanka, sculptures, uh, a Buddhist statue, and a sutra. That means Buddhist structures, scriptures. Okay, so there's, okay. Now, um, Lee, it would be great if you could narrate the upcoming series of photographs of art and artifacts from your book, and I will just ask various questions as we, as we go along. So let's begin by watching the screen and looking at these photographs. Now, this is an emperor, uh, Xin Long, on horseback, uh, and it's a hanging scroll of ink and color on silk. Can you elaborate? Uh, this uh, monumental sc hanging scroll is about 15 feet high Ooh. and um, depicting Emperor Qianlong's uh, grand reveal of his uh, eight banner army in 1739. Okay. five years after he ascended the throne. Okay, and uh, it, w it was painted by an Italian Jesuit court painter, wasn't it? Yes. And what was his name? He's an, uh, uh, he got a Chinese name called Lang Shining. Lang Shining. And, and, uh, and so, but he, be and he became a court painter for what, for, for 50 years or something? Correct. He first arrived uh, in China, uh, in 1714, and he arrived at the uh, Palace of Forbidden City uh, in 1715. Since then, he served for three emperors Ooh. for 50 years. As a court painter, amazing. Now let's look at the next photograph. This is a, a, this is a horse representing one of the uh, favorite horse of uh, Emperor Qianlong. Okay. And the emperor named him uh, Zi Zai Ji. And uh, if you translate into English, mm -hmm. it's uh, at ease with oneself. At, at ease with oneself is the name, is the name of this horse. <laughs> well, I found it interesting also that the painting includes the horse's name written in three languages. Uh, what are those three languages? The uh, first uh, language is uh, ch in Chinese. Chinese. The second is um, Manchu. Ma that means uh, Manchurian. 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 Yeah. The last uh, is uh, Mongolian. Mongolian. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Well, let's look at our next photograph. This is a, a ceremonial, ceremonial armor with dragon design. Uh, this has six protective panels and a steel plate on the back decorated with dragons and clouds. So, can you elaborate a little bit on this? This armor we saw uh, early on the, when Emperor was on horseback. He wear a very identical armor mm -hmm. like this one. Okay. And uh, what is special about this armor is a, embroidery oh, yes. of a dragon yes. and clouds yes. and sea waves decorated That's the armor. Beautiful, beautiful uh, design. Now let's go to our next slide, which is so interesting. This is returning to the capital, Emperor Sh Shangxi's tour of the south. I mean, our viewers should know that this monumental scroll belongs to a 12 scroll series that, docu that documents Emperor Kanshi's second journey to southern China in 1689. Uh, why is this significant? Yeah, Emperor Kangxi is a very important Chinese emperor in the Qing dynasty. And uh, he made um, six journeys to the south mm -hmm. soon after he became the emperor. And uh, this one, but only the second, his second journey was documented in paintings. And uh, this one depicting his return journey from south to Beijing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, this session, the audience can see the horse emperor's horsemen and uh, the street scene just outside Be uh, the Forbidden City, mm -hmm. about one mile south of the Forbidden A City. A lot of people there. Well, Okay, and now we have our next slide, which is going to be ritual bells. 
dating back to 1713 and used during the Shin Dynasty. Uh, these are 16 gilded bronze bells with, with cast with dragons and clouds. And each bell produces a different distinctive musical note, doesn't it? Correct. Because the inner dimension of these bells are different and um, the thickness of the wall are different as well. Also, they all look the same in size yes. from exterior, but when you strike it, it's they different, produce a different, different musical tones. Oh, very interesting. Now, we also have coming up a screen with dragons amid clouds. Uh, this is, was made during the Qing Dynasty. What is, what is important about the screen? The screen um, usually paired with a song a and throne. With it's, a on, it's on a throne usually. In right? front of uh, it, oh, okay. there is a song, often with a similar design mm -hmm. as the screen. Here we can see it's a, 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 a this is a screen with a red lacquer decoration. It's constructed with wood, precious wood, sandal wood mm -hmm. here called a zitan, and the, the center of the the screen is a. Um, red lacquer carved with a dragon and then f flanked with uh, um, smaller dragons. Mm -hmm. It's a symbol of the emperor leading young princess. Oh, okay. The next slide we have is the emperor's seal uh, with the dragon knob. Uh, apparently an emperor's seal represents the supreme power of the emperor and his empire. Uh, does he use the seal quite often? <laughs> <laughs> different seals were used for different purposes. This seal belonged to Emperor Qianlong, and uh, he w used this when he issued edicts to provincial officials. I see. What's interesting about this seal is on the face, it carved with four Chinese characters. Mm -hmm. In Chinese, it read. Jing Tian Qin Min. That means uh, honor, heaven, and dedicate to the people. And so it says honor, heaven, and dedicated to the people. Ooh, he sounds like a really uh, populist type of ruler. <laughs> so these four characters first are used uh, actually by his grandfather, mm -hmm. Emperor Kangxi, and then Emperor Kangxi's two successors, Emperor Yongzheng and Emperor Qianlong, used the same four characters Ooh. on their own seals. Interesting, interesting. So it's uh, kind of a harmony between divinity and society, isn't it? <laughs> right. Um, now we have a portrait of the Empress uh, in a ceremonial robe. Uh, and uh, her husband, uh, well, I want you to describe her husband and how important he was to the empire. <laughs> Uh, this uh, portrait depicts uh, um, Lady Fu Cha uh, uh, when he, she became empress after her husband, Emperor Qianlong, ascended the throne okay. in 1736. And um, she lived actually a very short time. She died at the age of 37. Oh, yes. And what did she die from? Was, did they, did they, does anyone know? She accompanied her husband to Shandong province to perform ritual services. She died on the, her return trip, mm. actually, on the, on the boat. It's a really sad story. Yes, yes. It's believed that the Italian artist um, Giuseppe Castelloni, which, who became known as Long Xining, was the one who painted the Empress, right? Yes. This portrait actually was uh, an early portrait mm -hmm. by uh, Lang Shining, and uh, he really depicted uh, the Empress in the formal uh, ceremonial robe. Right. And um, she exhibited her um, beauty and grace yes. in this yes. portrait. Yes, very, very pretty. Now, the next slide we have coming up is Emperor um, Xin, Xin Long enjoying his antiques on page 75 and 76 of this book. 
Uh, this hanging scroll is fascinating because the emperor is sitting and enjoying his antiques, and then there's an identical painting of him on the wall behind. Uh, correct. We see Emperor Qianlong here uh, sitting on the couch and surrounded by all type of uh, antiques mm -hmm. and uh, in Chinese history, from Shang bronzes mm -hmm. to Song and Yuan and uh, Ming Chinese ceramics. The hanging on the screen is an uh, emperor's uh, portrait. Yes. And also he added an inscription on top left. Yes. And uh, this um, uh, inscription added his uh, surf critics about uh, uh, two different um, controversial philosophy of government. And so it's like there were two different philosophies, Confuci Confucius and then the Mo Mohist, right? Correct. So which, which one was he? He just uh, posted uh, this uh, two different uh, philosophy. He himself, why worry and why wonder? I that know. leave this question to, <laughs> others, all the, all to <laughs> others to worry about, right? <laughs> But wasn't Emperor Qianlong more enthusiastic about Tibetan Buddhism than, than any of the other religions? He was a Tibetan Buddhist, wasn't he? Correct. Uh, Emperor Qianlong uh, is a real scholar. He's also a very faithful Buddhist. And uh, he promoted uh, 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 Tibetan Buddhism, and uh, he uh, nominated uh, um, uh, the third Zhang Jia, for example, as uh, the state preceptor and uh, in charge of uh, religious affairs in Beijing, Hebei, Shanxi mm -hmm. provinces. So how many temples are there in the Forbidden City, you think? Is it um, according to Palace Museum's publication record, they mentioned about 35. 35 temples. Temples and uh, uh, shrines mm -hmm. as well as chapels. Mm -hmm. However, recently, the director of the Palace Museum uh, mentioned that there are more than 70. Oh, more than 70, woo. We have now the emperor, Xinlong, celebrating the new year. Uh, and he is, in, he is sitting holding a baby and watching his older children play. And what are, they, what is, what are his children doing? Um, this uh, large portrait depicting Emperor Qianlong um, celebrating the Chinese New Year with his children. And uh, you can see the Emperor Qianlong holding a baby and also watching his younger children play firecrackers. Well, this is firecrackers, okay, with fireworks, that's interesting. Well, this is a consort uh, p p p looking into a mirror, a female figure. What, how many consorts did the emperor have? Um, uh, it depends. <laughs> Some emperor have many, others have very, very few. I see. And um, this is a portrait that depict uh, a, a court lady holding a mirror and wearing Han Chinese costume. Okay. And uh, also they are Manchu um, uh, people, but as uh, many uh, court members, including the emperor and empress, as occasionally wear Chinese, uh, Han Chinese uh, uh, robe. She was in the court and having fa a fairly nice life then. Um, you can see they were surrounded by uh, antiques and uh, one, uh, uh, one hand holding a bronze mirror, mm -hmm. another hand rest on a, a war, uh, warmer yes, that yes. indicate a season of the, the painting. Yes, yes, it was winter. So now we have a woman's purple robe uh, with dragonette medallions. What is, why is this important? Uh, this robe, compared to the one we saw, the lady holding a mirror, mm -hmm. and uh, this one represents uh, Manchu uh, uh, costume. Ma Manchurian. Manchurian. And okay. Qing style, it's really. And uh, it's uh, instead of full length, mm -hmm. this robe, it's knee length. Knee length, okay. And uh, what is a distinctive for this robe is the calf. Mm -hmm. It's in shape of uh, horse hooves. Horse hooves, oh. You can tell <laughs> in <laughs> yeah, both. Exactly, uh, that's right, the shape of the medallion is a horse hoof. Oh, that's interesting. Now, the next one is a floor screen with pine and bamboo. 
I want to see this one. So this is such a beautiful piece of work. This is a hardwood, hardwood item that was commissioned by the court. Is that right? Correct. And uh, this one is a, a product of a um, um, Guangzhou workshop instead of uh, the Imperial workshop. And uh, it's constructed uh, with wood and the, the central panel is uh, with a design of bamboo. All the bamboo is decorated with a kingfisher feather. Mm. And uh, so you can see from this uh, turquoise color, actually, it's a color of a kingfisher feather. Ooh, how beautiful. Now we have, the next one is called a wine set cup and stand. It's so beautiful. That, now this picture is also on the back of your book. This was an, uh, created by the Imperial Workshop using their own enamels modeled after European colors. Correct. This uh, uh, cup is uh, unique. It's because it's a brilliant color of uh, enamels. Mm -hmm. And it's an eccentric um, uh, uh, design and uh, also represent uh, how Chinese uh, craftsmanship developed yeah. develop, uh, under the guidance of uh, European artists. Artist. That's yeah. fantastic. Okay, and now we have a fruit container in the shape of a pavilion. Uh, now, this is so interesting. The, uh, apparently, this was the very uh, tableware like this and enameled decorations epitomized the level of luxury at court banquets in the 18th century in China. Yeah, this one, some say, dated to, uh, dated this piece to the 19th century, 18th to 19th century. Mm -hmm. It's made of uh, a gilt bronze and um, with f six columns entwined in, uh, with uh, two dragons. And uh, the base is made of wood. Mm -hmm. Interesting, if you look at uh, the top of uh, the, the pavilion, it's uh, covered with... Um, Pine needles. Which is this is uh, made of uh, silk cord. Aha, uh -huh. silk cord, Look, looking like pine needles. Very nice. People have a different saying about function about it. Mm -hmm. And a uh, palace museum secured her, identify it uh, for holding fresh fruits. And other people say it can host for holding candles. Candles too, okay. Uh, or incense. In, or incense, exactly. Now the next slide we have is a musical clock, which is so beautiful. And uh, I would love for you to talk about this clock because apparently uh, the Chinese learned to make clocks from the Europeans, right? Correct. Chinese started to uh, produce um, first uh, clock in the 16th century. Okay. And so they were fascinated with, uh, by the Western clocks. Right. This one is a product of 18th century by the Qing uh, uh, Imperial Workshop. I see. And, uh, and this clock also had music, right? It was Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the hour strikes, the uh, lotus flowers on top will open. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Queen Mother, a Taoist figure, Queen Mother of the West, okay. just uh, you can see in the center of the flower. Yeah, the, 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 the human figure, that's right, that's right, F -f fascinating. Um, and now we have also, now coming up, flowers and plants on a hanging scroll, which was uh, done around 1735, I think. Uh, was, was this was this was a court painter? Yes, the major portion of this catalog contains about 50 court paintings. Okay. And who are court painters? Uh, first is uh, imperial family mm -hmm. members, mm -hmm. including emperor, empress. Uh, and a second major group is uh, court officials, then mm -hmm. the court artists. Okay. And uh, uh, also European artists uh, is a major part of the, the court, art, court painting artists. Okay, and then finally we have the um, Fortuna Buddha in ritual costume. Do, were there, did the Buddhas often have costumes? Not really. Originally when they were cast uh, like this one from Tibet, uh, made in 17th century, 
there, is, there was no costume. The costume was added in the Qing court in the 18th century. I see. Lee, tell us about this pagoda with the Diamond Sutra. This embroidered scroll depicts a seven-story pagoda with multiple eaves and it was produced sometime between 1736 and 1795. Can you tell us about this? This pagoda contains uh, seven Buddhas in each level. If you look at closely, you will find tiny Chinese characters embroidered with uh, blue, dark blue threads. They de depict uh, Buddhist uh, scriptures called a Diamond Sutra. Oh. Within 5,000 characters, mm. the um, characters really arranged all over on the, the surface of this scroll. How fascinating. Thank you. Well, it has just been fascinating to hear about all these, to, to hear you talk about all these slides and to, to be, become more knowledgeable about Chinese art because for so long we've not known what's been happening and I think it's so wonderful that we're sharing and, and that the fact that you have this great exhibit in, in Virginia. <laughs> yeah, we were delighted. Uh, we secured all these loans. I think it's a great opportunity um, to our audience uh, to come to the museum and visit uh, to view this uh, great uh, exhibition and also um, gave our opportunity to write on this uh, uh, collection and to produce uh, this catalog. Oh, it's been fantastic. And thank you so much for being on the Bookman's Corner and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. And please join us again next month for a new edition of the Bookman's Corner. I'm Lois Lindstrom.